Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 11th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a quick post today about some of these recent vulnerabilities in IP address validation libraries. In particular, the problem or the root cause of these vulnerabilities was how addresses that are expressed in Octal are being parsed by these libraries. And for the most part, well, uh, these libraries uh, didn't really take Octal into account. And that then led to problems how the IP addresses were validated. This would not really be that big of a problem if the library that then actually does the network connection uh, did use a similar interpretation of these IP addresses. But pretty much any software that uh, connects uh, to a network service or implements a network service does use uh, the basic C sockets library. And yes, that library does parse octal IP addresses. Now, this library also provides a function inet a2n that does convert IP addresses expressed as a string into an integer. And that's probably a safer function to use because it's part of the same library. It does interpret IP addresses the same way as the functions that actually establish the connections. Instead, uh, many of these vulnerable libraries and languages are sort of re-implementing uh, this inet a to n function uh, by parsing strings essentially, which is uh, very difficult to get just right, meaning just the same way as the sockets library interprets uh, these addresses. After all, in the end, a uh, long unsigned integer or 32 bit integer is the way how IP addresses are in the end represented internally. So how you're converting from the string to the integer that's really uh, where the vulnerabilities and the problems happen. So in short, if you ever find yourself having uh, to uh, validate an IP address, uh, well, don't mix libraries, uh, use some well-validated libraries, and uh, don't try to rewrite your own INET A2N. And well, Apple's AirTags are about two weeks old, at least uh, two weeks sort of in consumer hands. And we got our first jailbroken AirTags. Apparently a researcher was able to uh, gain access to the firmware of uh, these AirTags and was able to download it as well as making modifications uh, to the AirTags firmware. The main modification made so far is to change the URL that a user will be redirected to if they are touching the AirTag. Uh, not really that much uh, malicious things that could possibly be done with that. First of all, it does require a rather delicate disassembly of the AirTag. Not really sure how well it will go together once uh, it has been uh, taken apart. So not necessarily a security issue per se, at least at this point, as uh, the kind of modifications that have been done so far are rather limited. But of course, uh, overall, these air tags do include a little computer, a microcontroller with 32 megabytes of RAM. So potentially someone could upload a completely different firmware as well. And the researcher who reported back in August last year about uh, malicious uh, Tor exit nodes has updated uh, their report. And uh, well, uh, they did see continuing spikes in uh, these malicious uh, Tor exit nodes, which apparently are all uh, being set up by the same entity. Now, the reason Nusino, the author of uh, this report, believes uh, that uh, they are uh, orchestrated by the same entity is similarities in the way they are set up, uh, but uh, looks like up to around 25% of uh, exit nodes are controlled by uh, this particular entity. And then, of course, can be used to either spy at users or manipulate traffic that exits or enters the Tor network. Probably the most important lesson to take away from this is that if you're using Tor, you still should rely on HTTPS in order to prevent anyone relaying your traffic from manipulating your traffic. 
Tor is really more about anonymizing the origin and the destination of the traffic. It's not about encrypting or integrity protecting the traffic at all. That's what we have a TLS for. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Tomorrow, of course, uh, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. So hope you're ready for that. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow.